Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Molly. I'm a mum here in the UK of two children. My husband and I have a biological little girl and more recently we brought home our son through UK adoption. I always get asked for resources that me and my husband use to educate ourselves about adoption when we were going through the UK adoption assessment process. Most voluntary agencies and local authorities as part of the adoption assessment process will ask you to do some independent learning of your own. You will normally get given a big list of resources that they will recommend to you, but they also like to have an idea for panel just to see what kind of learning you've instigated yourself and what you've done to branch out and educate yourself in some of the more niche areas of adoption. I've chosen six or seven books that I think are essential for a prospective adopter to read. I think that together they give you a really good overall understanding of everything you will need to know as an adoptive parent. The first book is this one. It is Parenting the Child Who Hurts by Caroline Archer. This one is specifically for tiddlers and toddlers, but she does do one for older children as well. This is one of the first books that I read when we first started stage one of the UK adoption process and I absolutely loved it. It's a very proactive book. It's not a big read at all. It doesn't take long to read. It's very simple. There's not a lot of jargon in it. And it really focuses on attachment and how you can build attachment with your little ones. I loved this book because it basically talks you through treating your child as a newborn when they first come home and that always stuck in my head for our introductions. It talks about all sorts of things such as music and movement and how smells can impact how comfortable and safe a little one will feel in your home in the early days or the first couple of years. I also really like the section on the midbrain and how you can use things like movement therapy and dance to help a child feel safe and to get them out of a negative shameful mind state so definitely definitely pick this one up by Caroline Archer. The next book is called The Primal Wound Understanding the Adopted Child. Now this is a tough read it focuses on the adoption triad as we call it so the child you as their parent and birth mum and I always had the question going throughout the UK assessment process for adoption of well if a baby's been removed at birth from its birth mum then how can it possibly have had any trauma if it's not been you know living in the home with birth family and this is a question that we still get asked today I know a lot of other adopters get asked it this book explains this to the point it's it's very raw it's very, very emotional and I will say it can be quite triggering to anyone who is struggling with the thought of a little one having a birth family or a birth mum because it is all about the primal wound which is created from the separation of a child from its biological mum. It does prepare you for the really tough parts of being an adoptive parent. It is a book that reminds you consistently that you can never be their biological parent and that you will always be an adoptive parent and that your child will always have a birth mum that they are tied to through this primal wound that is left when they're separated from them at birth. So take care of yourself if you read this one. I do think it's a really necessary read because it's just equipped us so, so well with such a different understanding and perspective on that relationship between little one and birth mum. It's also given me a huge amount of empathy, which has really helped me be at peace with my feelings towards little man's birth family. This book you will probably find on most reading lists from any local authority or voluntary agency. It's Creating Loving Attachments by two incredible people, Kim Golding and Daniel Hughes. If you're in the UK adoption assessment process, you've probably come across PACE, Daniel Hughes is responsible for that. So this book focuses on the model of pace, which in a nutshell is playfulness, acceptance, curiosity and empathy. And it takes you through that and why it's so important to use those four things when parenting a little one who is adopted or has experienced any trauma, neglect or loss. My favourite bit of this book was learning about attunement and reattunement and how when your little one moves home, they will have to reattune with you and your emotions and you'll have to attune with their needs and it's really really clever. I also really like the fact that it covers secondary trauma which is as an adoptive parent you can sometimes be physically, mentally and emotionally impacted by your little one's past trauma and so it really covered that just to create a general sense of awareness that we need to be aware of just in how we're feeling and how we process his trauma with him. 
definitely read this if you're going through the assessment process. It's a really, really wonderful read. The next book is this one. It's Why Love Matters. Love, love, love this book. It's, it's very factual and there is quite a lot of jargon in it. But once you've Googled the jargon and you've got to grips with it, I think that there's a wealth of knowledge and information in here that just needs to be shared with a prospective adopter. It focuses a lot on brain development and how brain development and the wiring up of a little one's brain who's experienced trauma can work. It focuses a lot on the stress hormone cortisol and that a little one who's had trauma will probably be living in that survival mind state and how that will impact them and impact you as a family and as a parent trying to, to handle that behaviour. I am fascinated by the link between cortisol and emotions and this book just explains it perfectly. I go back to this one again and again and again. It is one of my favourites so I would highly recommend that you give this one a read. If you are in the UK adoption assessment process or looking into it you will probably heard of something called therapeutic parenting and most likely a lady called Sarah Nash who wrote this book, The A to Z of Therapeutic Parenting. This is literally what it says, it's an alphabetical bible of different behaviours and things that you can expect to see in a little one when they move home and it basically tells you why these things might occur, how the little one is feeling and why they're feeling this way, why they're displaying this behaviour and how you as their parent can handle that therapeutically. As an adoptive parent we do have to parent differently, we have to parent therapeutically so that we can help our little ones heal from their trauma and process their trauma and live their lives having gone through this trauma, this potential neglect and loss and really be mindful that we don't do anything to make them feel shameful. Our little ones will feel shameful most of the time and this is a really good book full of very to the point simple strategies that you can use to help shift them from a shameful mind state to a really secure and safe place with you. For example, I'm in H, honeymoon period, what it looks like. The child moves in with a new family and appears to be extremely compliant. Yep, why it might happen, fear of the carer, wanting to please, fearful anticipation of negative response from the parent and the need to feel safe. And then it gives you a reality check and what you can do. So make it clear to the child that you accept them for who they are. Give the child space. Use wondering aloud to help the child. I have this on the shelf all the time. As soon as little man for us moved home, I was referencing this straight away. And we did read this as prospective adopters because it gave us a really realistic idea of what kind of behaviours we could expect. Um, and I feel like it really equipped us for panel when they asked us, how would you handle this? This is how we would handle this. Again, if you're going through the UK adoption assessment process, you will have heard all about attachment and potential attachment disorders. This book is brilliant for explaining attachment and the three kinds of attachment disorders in a really simple to the point, understandable way. I love this book. It honestly took me a couple of hours to read and it does highlight the three attachment disorders, how they present, why they present and how you as a parent can expect to deal with these. There's a really good section on psychotherapy in here. Now, not all children require psychotherapeutic support, but if they do, it's really good to just have a brief understanding of what that might look like and if not it's just good to kind of look at some of the psychotherapeutic principles that will probably be used in the areas of attachment and attachment disorders. Now this book is only really relevant if you are looking to adopt a child who is of a different race or ethnicity to yourself which is very common in the adoption process. A lot of people do put in their matching criteria that they would like to adopt a child of a specific race or a specific ethnicity that is different to their own and that is absolutely fantastic. One thing that will be raised is how you are going to promote and embrace and celebrate their race and their ethnicity, their culture, their heritage. That will constantly, constantly be brought up. This is the book for you. I adore this book, Raising Multiracial Children, Tools for Nurturing Identity in a Racialized World. It is very much about ethnicity as well as race. And it just goes through some of the challenges that you can expect in today, in a white British society, how to handle these, um, how to approach subjects at home, how to approach educational settings, how to equip teachers or nursery staff to have these discussions. 
our world changed after reading this. There's so much more that we consciously do as a result of this book, not just for the kids, but just as people. I have so much more of an appreciation after reading this book. So they are my top books for prospective adopters. I hope that has been helpful. We also watch a lot of YouTube videos, documentaries. We listen to a lot of podcasts. I um, am in university, so I looked at a lot of journal articles. There is a wealth of resources that you can look at. Your agency or your local authority will just want to see that you are committed to the process and that you're trying to educate yourself and further your learning and understanding of some of the things that will really help you as a parent. I do just want to point out as well that all of these books, by the time that I totted up the whole price of them overall, they were more expensive than my membership to Adoption UK. If you're not part of Adoption UK and in no way is this sponsored at all, um, certainly consider becoming a member. They have a lending library where you can lend pretty much all of these books for free. They just post them out to you, you read them and you post them right back and it saves you a ton of money in buying all of the books that will probably be on a reading list or any more that you're interested in. Um, so yeah, the price of all these books together are more than an annual membership to Adoption UK. So certainly have a look there because their lending library is fantastic. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos. I will be doing a video on my top books for adoptive parents that I found super, super useful since our little man moved home. So do stay tuned for those as well. Thanks for watching guys, bye.